morning guys uh, welcome back to my channel if you are a new viewer welcome I hope you enjoy this little show that I'm making for you and if you're a returning viewer thanks so much for coming back I hope you enjoy this update on a bunch of crafty things um, so if you don't know who I am my name's Kayleen I am the <laughs> A mom of two small kids and I am the principal dyer behind Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn and the fiber artist behind Little Bean Crochet on Etsy. You can find me on social media as Little Bean Crochet on Etsy, KM Weaver on Ravelry, and Little Bean Crochet Shop on Facebook. So hopefully I'm not too washed out. This room is extremely bright. I know you can probably see here. Um, and I'm also going to move a little bit quickly today because my morning nap time filming <laughs> is not happening this morning. So we are just going to move right along. We have a few things to go over today. The first thing I want to do is update you on my shop. <laughs> We're going to be interrupted. I know we are. Um, inter in interrupt. I'm going to interrupt you on my shop. I'm gonna update you on my shop. So pre-orders are still open for Halloween colorways. Um, they will be open until Saturday, the 13th of this week. And so if you're watching this and it's not the 13th yet and you haven't pre-ordered a Halloween color that you want, you should get over there and do it. If you order, if you pre-order from me, you're gonna get a free mini skein, a full 20 gram mini skein of a Halloween candy theme. And also you'll be entered to win a giveaway from my shop to win a 100 gram skein, a full skein of whatever yarn you'd like and whatever color you'd like. So I haven't had a ton of pre-orders, so your chances are pretty good if you go and pre-order right now. So let's get into acquisitions. Let's do acquisitions first. I teased a little bit last week that I ordered some cool things from some you know, independent sellers and I'm super excited to show you these things. I was eyeing them for a while. So the first thing I will show you is this project bag. This project bag was created by Miss Molly Klein of Molly Klein Designs and I will link her everywhere I can link her. And she has a channel as well, and I'll put that up in the corner box here. She does a small podcast, but look at how cute. Foxes. So I ordered this Foxes bag, which has a really cool inner. It's a plum color. She included a couple little free patterns and some tea and some candies and a sample of her soap, which I've taken out of the bag because it smells really good. But it's like... So strong. It's good. It's a good strong. <laughs> but I wanted to give this bag a chance to air out. Um, and it's good. It smells, what does it smell like? It's like, like clean cotton. That's what it kind of smells like. Mm, it smells so good. But I have it in the bathroom because <laughs> I couldn't wait to use it. And then I ordered this DPN cozy from her. It's just more foxes, which I thought was really cute. And there's a cute little flower pattern inside. Lovely. How many times did I say cute? It's cute, 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 cute. Every time I say cute, take a sip of your coffee or other beverage of choice. The other thing that I ordered was this gorgeous skein. This is from um, Lolo Did It. She is another independent dyer. She is really active on Instagram. She has an Etsy shop, which I will link down below. I'll link all of her contact information, but like, Girl Crush, hello, she is awesome. This is the colorway Pretty Young Thing, which she doesn't dye up very often, I hear. Um, but I've been eyeing, I've been waiting for her to dye this again so that I could get my hands on a skein. Um, it's just bright fluorescent pinks and blues and yellows and black speckling. Um, it's just, it's true to color there on the camera right now, so. It's gorgeous. Um, so this is in her favorite base, Lolo's favorite, which is an MCN base, which is 801010 Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. So I don't know what this will be yet. I'm thinking it's going to be a scarf of some kind or uh, for my daughter because these are her colors. I mean, she's just, she's just almost three and she just loves bright, speckly, lovely colors. So it's like, how many colors are in here? One, two, three four, five, six. It's probably six or seven colors in here. It's just lovely. And you look at it and you just want to squeeze it, squish it and pet it, and I will call you squishy. So that's my acquisitions. I'm very surprised we haven't been interrupted yet. 
my son is being very quiet in the other room and I'm alarmed. Only slightly alarmed. Okay, so let's go into works in progress. I don't have any finished objects for you today, but I do have this work in progress. This is my sock that I've been working on. Da -da -da. Um, so I, as you can see, I've given up on my DPNs, at least for the moment. And this has been transferred onto a magic loop, which is just on a circular needle. And look at that progress that I've made. So it's now like a goatee. Uh, so I finished the heel turn and gusset and decreases, and now I'm on to the straight stitching to go all the way down the foot. And these, the pattern here, so washed out, I'm so sorry. Um, this is the Rose City Rollers pattern in my Lighthouse Sunset colorway on my Everyday Sock Base, which has been really nice to knit with. Um, I don't use fingering base all that often, especially when I crochet, but I've been very much enjoying this, uh, knitting this up. Um, but there, there are mistakes in here and there are issues with tension. Like I have some rows that are pretty loose and other rows that are much tighter. Um, I don't know if it's because I transitioned over to the magic loop that I am knitting a little bit loop more loosely, but it's coming out so cool and the, the colorway is knitting up really nicely. I'm, I'm absolutely digging this. Um, so I don't know if I'll be able to wear this sock. It's a little bit big on my heel, um, but it'll at least be a sample of my color that I can show people and be like, yeah, this is what it's going to look like if you knit it up into a 64 stitch, stitch sock. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool. So that's the only progress that I have. Obviously I acquired these new needles. They're just Knitter's Pride um, Nova Platina needles. Nothing special. They're sharp enough for me at this time anyway. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. Feeling good about that. So it's just ticking along, ticking along. Um, I don't have anything else to show you as far as finished objects or works in progress because I'm still in a little bit of a funk with my work that's going. I've been spending a lot of time dying. Uh, I'm just going to pull up my notes here so I don't, you know, go too far off topic. Instagram. Okay, so um, I've been doing a lot of dyeing this week and I dyed five colors this week two gradients and three variegated skeins and they're all inspired by Stranger Things. <laughs> Stranger Things! Um, so I'm going to show them to you just in terms of dyeing like um, just the techniques that I used and the colors that I used but I'm not I'm not going to talk about shop updates right now I'll talk about those at the end. So um, I did two gradients one is called Leaven. It's really washing out. Um, so we have this navy blue in the center, transitioning out to a gray, and then into this mauve color, which is really pretty. And then we have the upside down, which is a dark charcoal black, transitioning into some green speckly things, into some light gray, and then back into some mid gray. I put pictures of these on Instagram, and I'll just pop them over here. For you guys to look at the entire gradient. So those two gradients were really fun. Um, there's so much work to do gradients but I really really like them and I like using them for hats or gloves or things where you're really going to see the whole spectrum. Um, and for socks too that would be really cool to see these in socks. Um, so then the next colorway that I dyed was called Buyers vs. Beast and this is the colorway. So it is this kind of chestnut brown and blue. It has some blues and greens and yellows in there. Um, and I'll put the inspirational photo up so you can kind of see what inspired this. But I have this color and this is what it looks like reskeined. So you can see all the blending of the color together. It looks really cool. It's a nice cool tone brown with some pops of yellow and blue in there. It's pretty awesome looking. Um, I like the way it looks reskeined, so I may end up just reskeining all of these that I have 
but um, <clears throat> that's number two that I dyed. Then the next color that I dyed was kind of an experiment. So I was going to dye a Barb colorway. Uh, Barb is Nancy's friend in the show and you know, she's the voice of reason, you know, telling her friend not to go and sleep around. So <clears throat> I was gonna do that. And then I wasn't liking how it was coming out. It was the right colors, but it just, for some reason, wasn't wasn't jiving. So I'm like, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color for Barb and I'm gonna layer some more colors over it for Nancy. And it's this one is called Into the Void Nancy. So this color is inspired by when Nancy goes into the Upside Down to look for Barb, she finds this, this entrance break in space-time to find her. So you'll see in the deeper layers of color, you're going to see some oranges and blues in there, which are the Barb colors that I was working with. See, this is pretty orange. Some blues and grays, blacks, plums, pinks. I think there are five or six colors in the skein altogether. But it's really cool. You can see in here the focus, some orange. So this was the other one that I did. It looks really cool in DK weight too. So it's a variegated skein. You can see the orange and blue in there as well. <clears throat> so it was kind of like an experiment gone right. So I'm very happy and very pleased with the final result. I can repeat this, so I do have it up as a dyed to order. I shouldn't tell about shop updates. Don't do that, Kaylee. Okay, and then, so that was two gradients, those two variegated, and this is the variegated that I dyed this morning. This is a Poulain colorway. This is called, it's attracted to blood. It's attracted to blood. So this is a combination of hand painting and kennel dyeing techniques. These are about 60% dry right now. I dyed them at 6 a.m. <laughs> this morning, the only time that I really get to dye. Um, so it's these deep charcoal grays fading up and then also having some nice blood red tones. <laughs> um, sorry, that was really awkward. Uh, I really love Halloween and doing kind of spooky colorways and so um, I was really excited to dye this. I have one more in mind that I will probably dye up tomorrow in each of the bases. Um, but this is what it looks like. <sighs> I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased with it. I hope you guys are too. This is pooling, so it will kind of look like my Lighthouse Sunset where it makes short stripes um, and it'll be grays and reds, so it'll be nice for a guy, guy colorway if you're knitting up for a man some socks or a hat or whatever. That'll look really cool. Okay, so those are all the things that I've dyed. I did want to talk slightly about reskeining um, as you know a dye topic so <clears throat> when colorways get dyed depending on the technique um, it's going to look kind of splotchy so for example this is you know someone this is someone else's yarn this is Lolo's yarn but this isn't reskeined this is you know she dyed this dried it wound it up into a skein that looks like this and it looks really cool but sometimes it's hard to see in a variegated skein how something will work up if it's, you know, either reskeined or not. So with this, if I unravel the hank, I can tell how it was dyed so I have an idea of how it will crochet or knit. But it's hard to tell how these colors will work together. Will they blend nicely? Will they have a nice final effect? And if you reskein your yarn <clears throat> as a dyer, you get a better idea of the blending of colors. So a good example that I can show you is this color, which is um, Buyers versus Beast. It's a little difficult to see right here, just because of the lighting I'm working with today. But there are a lot of navy tones and yellow tones. So I'll put a picture here. It'll be easier to see in a photo versus here right now, um, what the color looks like unblended because the browns and blues are a little mixing together because the light is so strong. But, oh, there we go, okay. So that's a little more true to life. So we have some blues and yellows and greens mixed in with this brown. Like it's like a multi-dimensional brown. I think it's one, two, three, four, there are five colors in the skin. So you can see that they're kind of blocked together. So there's like a section of blue, a section of yellow. And sometimes that can be a little bit off-putting because you're not 
so you're not seeing how the colors will be blended together when you knit or crochet. So if you restain the yarn, you can see things that are evenly distributed. So you can see in this skein, <clears throat> the yellow and blue and brown, like the different shades of brown, all work together really nicely to create this cool tone palette. And I'll put a picture too, in case it's a little bit difficult to see, I'll just put it right here, of what the reskein looks like. So you can see the difference between the blocks of color versus, you know, looking at it blended together. So sometimes it's nice to blend the skeins together. So what I'll do is for this colorway that I just dyed is I'll show some skeins that look like this so that you can have an idea of the technique that was used to make it and then I will blend them by reskeining them. So I use the Nitty Knotty to reskein. I don't have any crazy equipment like a professional reskeiner because those are thousands of dollars. But I use my Nitty Knotty and my Swift and I'll take my yarn, put it on the Swift and then wind it around my Nitty Knotty. This is a two yard Nitty Knotty. So when you wind it, the final circumference of the circle is two yards, which is slightly bigger than how they are when they're dyed. So these reskein up very nicely for me um, because these are about a yard and a half, I think, uh, when I dye them. So uh, the colors blend together quite nicely. So sometimes you'll see skeins that look like this, where it's all blended together. And then sometimes you're gonna see skeins that look like this um, the colors can be very similarly dyed and placed on the skein, but reskeining gives it an entirely new look. So, um, if you're working with a lot of bold colors, you might, as a, as a, a business owner, as, as a person who dyes, I would want to put out a picture of the skein as it is out of the pot, and then also a picture of the skein as it is when it's reskeined, so that a the customer and the person who's interested in purchasing it can see exactly how it's going to work up because this right now looks pretty splotchy it's just how the dye was applied to the skein oh yeah you can see the blue right there blue and yellow but when it's blended this is what it's going to look like when it knits up it's a better representation of the distribution of color so just some food for thought, just some dye, dye interest type discussion. So uh, what do you prefer? Why don't you put it in the comments below? If you are a person who purchases, you know, independently dyed yarn, do you prefer to see a skein reskein, or do you prefer to see what it looks like out of the pot or do you like both? Let me know. Um, okay, so I am going to <clears throat> get to some questions for the ask me anything, ask me anything. <laughs> uh, let's go to my page. So I asked on my Facebook page and also on my Instagram page to leave me some questions. And I have a couple of questions here from a couple of different people. Do, do, do. Okie dokie. So I will start with Facebook. So on Facebook, I had one person ask me a question, but she asked me like four questions in a row. So I'm going to do my best to answer these questions. Um, I'm going to skip questions I've already answered recently. You can just check out the other videos. I'll tell you if I can remember which episode I answered. But So her first question, this is Christina. She is Tina's Toasty Toes on Instagram, and she's a sweetheart. Hi, Christina. Um, would you ever consider doing your Flowers for Dobby colorway as a gradient? So here is Flowers for Dobby. Um, I've considered, you know, transitioning some colorways and doing them in a gradient style versus a kettle dyed style. I'm not sure if I would want to do this colorway as a gradient only because I like the grayish tones, the, the, the base of the yarn to be the superstar and then have those small pops of color. Um, <clears throat> probably not, but, um, children children um probably not but you know it's something that i've considered doing for other colors um just to see how it would work uh yeah that's pretty much the long and short of it uh what is your most favorite place in the world to be and why is that your favorite place so i'm not sure i can answer this for one place so place that I really love to be is home. I like being home with my kids and my family, spending time with them. Um, anywhere I can be around friends or family is really my favorite place to be. I love company, I love hanging out and just being relaxed, either at a play date or 
home. You know, I just really like being around people. I'm not necessarily super outgoing, but um, <clears throat> if I'm in a close quarters, like close friends, um, it's really fun. So I really enjoy that. In terms of place in the whole world, so like geographical location, Obviously, I'm a New Englander. I grew up in Rhode Island. I'm living in Massachusetts now, but I really loathe the winter. So we went to San Francisco. We went to California. Obviously, we all fall in love with California, but we went to visit San Francisco, and my husband and I both really fell in love with the location there and the weather. Even in the middle of the summer, it was so nice. It was so nice. Like, it's, it's not humid in the way that it is here or scorchingly hot or absolutely freezing cold in the winter so it's much more temperate um, you know <clears throat> an all year round type of feel so ooh, California is <laughs> pretty nice um, I mean I was enjoying the Bay Area do I have any pets? I don't anymore. I used to have two cats. I think I answered this question in the last podcast where I talked a little bit about my family, um, but my son is allergic to cats, so we had to rehome our cat with my husband's grandmother. And then what is my favorite yarn weight to crochet with? My favorite yarn weight, I would say, is a DK or worsted weight, only because it moves very quickly off my needle. Um, <clears throat> and I think that a lot of knitters have the same feeling in, in terms of their um, knitwork that worsted or DK weight tends to move along more quickly. Um, I just enjoy it. I enjoy doing hats and blankets and scarves and stuff in that weight, but I have been enjoying fingering weight lately. It's definitely a new thing for me to be working with, especially in knitting and especially in crochet, especially in both. How can it be especially in both? Especially just working with the yarn, not necessarily dyeing the yarn, but like working in the, the medium. Um, has been really fun to see. Okay, I had to take a quick break for the bathroom because I have drank through my entire cup of coffee. It's empty, it's gone, bye-bye coffee. Um, okay, so the other questions that I had were from Instagram and Victoria Jean W asks me two questions. Uh, one was the best way to learn how to crochet and the other one is about opening an Etsy shop. So best way to learn how to crochet, it depends on what kind of learner you are. If you are a visual learner, if you can learn just by watching someone else uh, and not necessarily having an interpersonal reaction, you probably can just watch a YouTube tutorial, pick up a needle and just mimic everything that they're doing. Um, for me, I like to do that. That's my preferred method to learn a new technique. I can, I've been doing it for so long. <laughs> Tucker just touched the television. I need that. Uh, I'm going to fix that, but I do prefer to watch on like YouTube or just watch somebody do a new technique breed it in a pattern and just do it. But that's because I've been doing it for so long. Um, if you're a new crocheter, I definitely recommend taking a class at your local yarn shop or finding a place where you can take a class um, where you can ask questions, have hand, like hand on hand help in holding a needle or, you know, your tension, you know, correcting issues that you can't necessarily correct on your own if you're just beginning. Um, so either way is fine. It just depends on the type of learner that you are. All right, now I'm gonna go fix that television and I'll be right back. Again, interruptions, hashtag interruptions. The last question that was asked of me this week was everyone says you should open an Etsy shop. False. So she wants to know pretty much, should you listen to what people are telling you? Should you open an Etsy shop? Um, if people are saying like, oh, you crochet, you should open an Etsy shop. Yes and no. Um, a couple of things. One, Etsy is a business. So you are opening up a business. You should treat it like a business. You should file your taxes. You know, you should be aware of compliance. So if you're making children's items, especially clothing or teething rings or other things like that, you need to be aware of uh, legal compliance. Um, there are some Facebook groups that deal with that. Uh, it can be more complicated than you want it to be. So if you're a hobby crocheter or a hobby knitter and you wanted to sell your work, um, you can open an Etsy shop, uh, but know that you fall under certain legal regulations that you need to be following. And if you don't and get caught, then you're in real, real big trouble. But um, 
if you're into it and you really want to do it, then do it. Open up an Etsy shop, register your business. What is going on? Why is that so loud? <laughs> I'm gonna go crazy, I'm going crazy. <laughs> Tucker now is turning volume up on the television. Okay, serenity. Let's answer the question. Should you open an Etsy shop? Yes and no. Know that Etsy is a business. You are opening a business. You are. You should be treating it like a business. You should treat your customer base with proper business etiquette. You should be following all legal regulations that apply to whatever you're selling. So if you're selling clothing or children's items, you need to be registered as a C, at, with the, I think it's C-S-P-I-A uh, as a small batch manufacturer. You should follow the safety testing regulations for anything that you're selling. Um, it does come in, it, a lot of things do come into play. If you're just a hobby crocheter or knitter and you're looking to sell your work, you can sell in person or just open a small Facebook page, maybe just sell to some local photographers to begin. Um, but you really want to make sure that you're compliant with everything that you're selling, that you're not selling anything that's going to hurt anybody and that you're following all safety testing um, in terms of your materials and you know what you're putting out there into the market. So yes, you can open an Etsy shop and yes, it's great and um, but it comes with a lot more than what people initially think people because you can just open an Etsy shop. you can just open it. Go to the website, start a shop. But you fall into a lot more regulation than you probably would initially um, conceive in your head when, you, when you're thinking about, oh, should I just open an Etsy shop? Yes, you can. But you do have to take into account all of the other legal regulations and other things that come into owning a shop. I have a visitor. Hi. Want to come up? Whoa! Hi, buddy. So that's the, the short answer. Um, why not just do it? Uh, so that was the last question. Hi. <laughs> that was the last question that I had for the Ask Me Anything. Let me just double check to see if there's anything else here. And I don't see any other questions. Let me check the Ravelry page. Normally, I wouldn't have Tucker here, but Tucker did, decided he didn't want a nap this morning, so I am doing this all with them here. <laughs> Do you see you? Do you see you in there? Is that you? Are you watching? Let's get distracted by cuteness here. Uh, and the trash truck is here. Wow. One thing after another. Yay! Oh, don't touch it. I have all the yarn on the table. Okay, so I don't have any questions in my Ravelry group or anywhere else. Let's go trash truck. Let's just do it. Make all the noise. Sorry for your ears if that's loud. Uh, it's trash day. It's Tuesday. Normally I don't film this early, but I want to get out of the house with these kids at some point. So I'm not going to take afternoon nap for filming. I'm just going to take afternoon afternoon nap for editing. Mm -hmm. Say hi. You say hi. Hi. Alright, so, <laughs> so as far as the Ravelry group, I am going to do a small crochet along Hello. with you. Ah. Ah. Yeah? You want to ah. do it? Ah. Um, and a Halloween theme, so it'll be, I'll put a thread up today in the Ravelry group for the crochet along slash knit along. Hi. <laughs> hi. Um, the only thing that I would say are the rules would be you should start the project this month. So I'm going to open the thread right now, but if you started something a little bit sooner, that would apply to the crochet or knit along. As long as it started in August, that would be fine. Um, that if it's going to be of a spooky nature, either the yarn and or the pattern are, you know, a little bit Halloween themed, so like a darker and a phone call and a phone call interrupts my filming. So um, Halloween themed. <clears throat> Either the yarn itself and or the project type. So an example would be something like a Morticia shawl where it's crocheted and it's lacy and it's 
the Morticia shawl, you know, it's something spooky, or the Love of Spiders shawl, like it has a spooky name or a spooky look, uh, or the yarn is very creepy, like this one is kind of creepy, it's a bloody kind of thing. My goodness. This yarn is creepy. It's a little dark, so if you make socks out of this and it's like, ooh, it, it, uh, it's attracted to blood and it's just a vanilla pair of socks, but the yarn is this, you know, something, something that's like that. So it's not super strict. It's something to be kind of fun and just to enjoy crocheting or knitting with one another. There aren't a ton of people in the Ravelry group, so if you're into it and you want to, yeah, yeah, if you want to do it, do it, and if you don't, that's okay too. We'll have a chatter thread and a finished objects thread. And if there are enough people participating, we can do a little, yeah, we can do a little giveaway of maybe some yarn or some stitch markers or something um, that will be appropriate. So that's the end of the podcast stuff. And I would like to get into some shop update stuff. Mama. So this week, mama. This week I did some, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I did some dyeing uh, in the Stranger Things colorways, which I showed before, Mama. but I wanted to share what is actually up for sale. So I have two, two sets of gradients in DK weight. So I have two of the 11 colorway and two of the um, upside down colorway available in DK weight. It's also available as a dye color. Mama. It's a repeatable colorway. The colorway I dyed today, which I'll have pictures up. Oh no, I'll have up later. You cannot have that. You cannot have that. You wanna know? You can't play with any of these things. You wanna play with daddy's hat? Here, play with daddy's hat. Um, you wanna go see Cece? You wanna go see Cece? She's watching Elmo. You wanna go watch Elmo? Okay, Cece, okay. I may cut some of that out, I don't know. Okay, so the other colorway that I had dyed today, which is, it's attracted to blood. It's drawn by blood. I haven't decided on a colorway name, but this will also be up for sale, one available on each base, and also as a dye to order. It's a repeatable colorway, so I'm happy to dye that up. Um, the next one that's available, I have one of each base as well. This is Buyers vs. Beast. So this is, uh, you know, a cool tone brown with some greens, yellows, and blues mixed in. Um, I have it in every base. So this is the simple sock base, the everyday sock base, and in the DK base, and also up as dyed to order. And then the last colorway is one that I did yesterday, which is Into the Void Nancy. Um, this is also a pretty complicated colorway. It has lots of colors in it. It has probably five or six colors. And it is repeatable, so I do have it up as dye to order, but I have right now one available at every base. So this is everyday sock, everyday sock base. This one is in the DK base. This is in the sparkle sock base. And this is in simple sock. So I have one of each available as ready to ship and then also up in the die to order section. I still have some mini stain sets left and available. So this is Honey Dukes. Uh, I finally got my packaging in the bags that I was waiting for to put these up in the shop. There you go. So I need presentation. So I have some mini skein sets available. I still have some Harry Potter mini skein sets available. So if you're looking for mini skeins, they're around. I am missing a sample, but I also have some samples up for sale. So if you're like me, I'm super tactile. I like to squish and feel and want to be like around all the yarns. Um, but I'm really hesitant to purchase from online retailers only because I'm so particular about the way that I, I like yarns to feel and to stitch. So I got this idea out of one of interruption I promise it's last interruption so um, I don't know where it left off I don't know where it cut off so I have yarn available as ready to ship I have some as dyed to order I have mini skein sets available as ready to ship and then I also have some sample sets available to ship one in every base a sample in every base so these are 10 yard samples 
of each base. I am missing my sparkle base here right now, but um, I got this idea from one of the yarn groups that I'm in. A uh, customer was saying, I wish I knew what all the bases felt like for different dyers. And everyone was like, yeah, why don't people have samples? I would totally buy samples. And I'm like, you know what? That's actually a really awesome idea. And it's something that I thought of when I was, before I started dyeing, as just a consumer of, you know, independently dyed products that I almost, I wished that there was a way for me to touch and feel something before I purchased it. So what I did was I put together some sample sets, some 10 yard samples for you to squish and love and to touch, um, to stitch up and just feel, you know, what the base actually feels like. It, you know, it's enough to cast on, you know, 10 or 15 stitches and just stitch, um, just stitch with to see if you like it, if you like the feel, if you like it against your skin or you don't. Um, usually you can tell just by touching the yarn. So I put these as available, kept them reasonably priced because they're just samples, but I do have to wind these myself on my Nitty Naughty, so it does take a fair bit of work for me to wind off samples, but I'm happy to do so, and for anybody who's interested, they are up for sale in my shop for like four bucks, plus whatever shipping it is. Today is an interruptions day, so that's the end of everything. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I'm sorry it feels probably very disjointed. I'm going to edit it together, hopefully so it feels a little more cohesive and not as interrupty, but it's pretty interrupty today. Pretty interrupty today. So the last thing is just a reminder that the pre-orders are still open for Halloween colorways in my shop. Um, they'll be open until Saturday. If you pre-order something, then you're going to get a free mini skein, a full 20 gram mini skein of a Halloween candy themed colorway. And also you're going to get a, um, you'll also get entered into win a giveaway for a hundred grams skein of my yarn. So a full skein of yarn in your choice of weight and colorway. Yeah, pretty much that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry it was so disjointed. It's been a crazy morning. I can't wait to get out of the house <laughs> this morning with the kids. Um, but yeah, I'll just talk to you guys next week. Uh, have a lovely week, have a nice weekend, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.